And so why did God invest so much capacity in women? Isaiah chapter 51 verses 1 and 2. Can we put it up please? Isaiah 51, 1 and 2. He says, Hearken unto me, you that follow after righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look unto the rock whence you were hewn, and unto the hole of the pit whence you were dead. Verse 2. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bore you. For I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. He said, look unto Abraham your father. But guess what? As, as wonderful as Abraham is, and the blessing and everything that was put upon Abraham, he was not the one that bare the kids. That's why he says, and to Sarah who bore you. I mean, you know, Abraham, without Sarah, we would not be here today. He could have had Isaac by himself, could he? Abraham your father, but also unto Sarah. Look unto Abraham your father, but also unto Sarah who bore you. Thank God for the anointing, for the blessing, for the mandate that's upon the man, but it is the woman that bears. Amen? So even as we look unto Abraham, the father Abraham, and uh, you know the blessings of Abraham, we have to realize that they are, they, they, those blessings of Abraham, they manifested through Sarah. Because without Sarah, there will be no Isaac. Without Isaac, no Jacob. No Jacob, no Israel. No Israel, no Jesus. Amen? Look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah that gave birth to you, that bore you. So if God is asking us to look unto Abraham, then and unto Sarah as well. Let's look unto Sarah this morning and see what God said to Sarah. Go to Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17. I'm so glad that God spoke to Abraham, but he also spoke to his wife Sarah. Amen. He made promises to Abraham, but he also made promises to who? To his wife Sarah. Let's see what he said to Sarah in Genesis chapter 17. Go there with me. Genesis 17 from verses 15 and 16. Genesis 17, 15 and 16. We're trying to discover why did God invest so much capacity in women, in mothers? Why? Because if you understand this, then you begin to understand what God is expecting of you. You begin to understand the role that you have as a mother. Amen? That it goes beyond what we've known and traditionally, there's more to it. In Genesis 17 verses 15 and 16, it says this, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give you a son also of her. Look at the latter part. Yea, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Say with me, mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. A mother of nations, kings of people shall come from her. Listen to those verses in the, in the Message Bible. If you have the message, put it up. Uh, listen to those verses in the Message Bible. God continued speaking to Abraham, Genesis 17, 15, 16. God continues speaking to Abraham and Sarai, your wife. Don't call her Sarai any longer. Call her Sarah. I will bless her. Yes, I'll give you a son by her. Oh, how I'll bless her. Nations will come from her. Kings of nations will come from her. Nations will come from her. And kings of nations will come from her. Nations will come from her, and kings of nations will come from her. He says, I'm calling her mother of nations. Can I say something to you moms today? If you are children of Abraham through Jesus Christ, right? If you be in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs of the promise, yes? We are also children of Sarah by birth, yes or no? And if that be the case, the promises of Abraham are yours, but the promises of Sarah are yours too. The blessings of Abraham belong to you, yes, but the blessings of Sarah belong to you too. 
And what is what God said to Sarah? Nations shall come out of you. Kings of nations shall come out of you. Hello, mothers. Can I challenge you today? That it is God's intention and plan that nations come out of you. You thought you just had those children, those one or two or three children. No, you have nations. You have kings that have come out of you. Oh, is somebody hearing me? It is nations that are coming. Out. You're giving birth to nations. You're giving birth to kings, rulers. That is how we are supposed to see. Hello? The state of motherhood. That out of me is coming nations. Out of me is coming kings of nations. So you don't look at those children as just some ordinary children. That, no, no, God said no. That's a king of nations. That has come out of you. That changes things, doesn't it? I said that changes things, doesn't it? That changes things when it comes to mothering, doesn't it? I am raising a king. I am raising a nation here. I am raising a nation here. I am raising a king here. Because God said that nations will come out of me and kings of nations will come out of me. It's not just a blessing of Sarah. It's my blessing through Christ. If you be Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and Sarah's kids, right? And heirs of the promises. Yes or no? How many heirs of the promises that we have here? So women as mothers, as, as heirs of the promises God made to Abraham and Sarah, kings and nations come out of us. Amen? Somebody hearing me today? That is God's view of motherhood if you're in covenant with Him. Nations. You are mother of nations. You are mothers of nations. You are mothers of kings. Boy or girl, your child, it doesn't matter. They're kings. They're rulers. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm not just raising some kids there. I'm not just raising just some children. I am raising kings. And I'm raising nations. Uh, is, this, is, this, is this registering with us today? Moms, dads, so you can help your mom or your wife to realize and you can help her to realize I'm not just raising kids here. I'm not just raising a doctor. I'm not just raising a lawyer. I'm not just raising, you know, uh, a dentist. I'm not just raising a teacher. I'm not just raising, listen, I'm raising a king. I'm raising a nation. So we don't toy with that responsibility. We don't belittle it. Hello? We don't belittle it. And we don't think, oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. Guess what? God has put in you the capacity to do it. Woo! Amen? Is somebody hearing me? Are you listening to me today? So thank God for our moms and all that they do. But the, the, the word of the Lord to us today which I said was a prophetic utterance, is that kings and nations are coming out of you. Kings and nations. Not ordinary kids. Not just ordinary kids. Ah, hey, brother Adi, it doesn't seem like it. My, my kids don't look like no kings. And it doesn't seem like anything is happening. Well, the story ain't over. I said the story isn't over. Is the story finished? It's good to get God's perspective. Too many times we draw our perspective from circumstances. We draw our perspective from what's happening around us. We draw our perspective from society. It is time we begin to draw our perspective from God. How does God see this? 
What did God say about this? What did God say about mothers? Mothers, kings and nations are coming out of you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't let circumstances of life shake your confidence in this truth. Brother Ali, you don't understand. My son is in jail, man. Well, that's circumstance. But that doesn't change what God said. <laughs> I said that doesn't change what God said. Kings and nations are coming out of you. Amen? Is someone, can, you, can, you, can you say amen this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Am I talking to the right people here? Yes. <laughs> Amen? Amen? If you look at the... I'll just clue you into some of this. If you read the book of... In the, in the, book of, in the Old Testament, in the, in, the, in the records of the kings of Israel, in the book of 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, in the records of the kings of Israel, there's an interesting pattern that I saw. <clears throat> Whenever a king came on the throne, their mother's name was put there. How many have observed that? How many have? Uh, go back and check it out. First Kings, Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles. It talked about the different kings that came. So whenever a new king was introduced, his mother's name was put there. His mother's name. Go check it out. Amen. And I wonder. I said, well, Lord, why? He said, because I said, kings will come out of you. <laughs> Royal mothers are keys to continuity from king to king. Royal mothers are the key to continuity from king to king. What do I mean by that? That royal mother was the wife of the former king. If the, if, the, if the legacy, the, the, the beliefs, the, 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 the God of that former king must continue to the next king, which is her son, who is the connector, mommy. Oh my God. Is somebody hearing me? So if, if, if kingship in Christ Jesus must continue from my generation to my son's generation, guess who a key connector is? Mother. That's why mother's names were always mentioned when kings were announced. Go read the Bible. Go check it out. How many of you have observed that in First Kings, Second Kings, First Chronicles, Second Chronicles? Go check it out. Mother's name is always mentioned when a new king is announced on the throne. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The mother is a vital link between fathers and children. The mother is a vital link between fathers and children. Amen. And she's pivotal to the success of of the new king's reign. Oh, I hope you're hearing what I'm saying. Mothers are a vital link between <coughs> fathers and their children, and they are pivotal to the success of their reign, to the success of their kingship. Is this your heart this morning? No. Hello? They are, they are necessary and pivotal to the success of their children's reign. And God said, our children were supposed to reign in life as kings through Jesus Christ. Yes or no? Yeah. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5.17, is that, or what is it? Is it? No, Romans 5.17. For they that receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. Romans 5.17, put it in the Amplified Bible. Romans 5.17. 
and they that receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life as kings through Jesus Christ. Shall do what? Reign in life as kings. For if because of one man's trespass, life's offense, death reign through one, much more surely will those who receive God's overflowing grace or merited favor and the free gift of righteousness, putting them in right standing with himself, reign as kings in life through one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. We are supposed to what? Reign as kings in life. And the success of our reign as kings in life is very much tied in to your role as a mother. Amen? Amen? Oh, what pressure. Are you putting so much pressure on women? I'm not putting any pressure on you. You know why? God has already given you the capacity to do it. That's why I prefaced all this by saying that God has given to mothers tremendous capacity. It's amazing. You see, I'm telling you, we haven't even tapped into the capacity God has given to mothers. Do you realize that mothers can change a nation? Forget kids, a nation. We're coming to that. Amen? Amen? <laughs> so the success of their reign is dependent upon the mother. In Proverbs chapter 31, verse 1 to 9, write it now, read it later. Proverbs 31, 1 to 9. If you can put up the very first verse, first verses 1 and 2 for me. Read verse 1 to 9. Well, verses 1 and 2. You know, Proverbs 31 talks about the Proverbs 31 woman, right? The Proverbs 31 woman, yes. What about the Proverbs 31 mother? Look at it. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. King, mother. King, mother. Now, I'm not saying dads are not important. Dad, you'll get your turn. Your day will come. But I'm just telling you that God has ordained and prepared mothers for this role. What role? To raise kings. To raise nations. And there you are. You thought you were just an ordinary housewife. You thought I'm just an ordinary. I'm just a mother of three children. Hello, somebody. I want to stir you up this day. To realize that you are more than you thought you were. You are more than you thought you were. You can do more than you, than you thought you could do. God has put it in you to do more than you thought you could do. It's in there. You just have to stir it up and let it out. 